there, I'm Katherine Himes. I am equal parts designer, player, and big old fan to many tabletop games. When I play something, it is often a dicey split between enjoyment in the moment and over analysis to try and figure out what makes this game tick. I love collecting mechanics for my game design toolbox as a way to hone craft and answer the ultimate question, why is this fun? With that in mind, I want to offer up a neat mechanic for study and inspiration that has had a recurring role in a growing number of recent tabletop games. Today, I'm here to talk to you about games that make things as you play them. There is a fascinating line of titles over the last decade across many formats that tinker with the notion of artifacts of play. By that I mean items we create by virtue of playing the game. Think the final map of a game of pandemic legacy or the mingled drawing outliving a session of exquisite corpse. These artifacts stick with the players long after the game session itself is over and bring with them a whole lot of opportunity to increase the long-term impact of a tabletop game. So at the end of this talk, you should have a taste of how artifacts of play are being used in games across many formats, how they can be used to make games more intimate, more personal, and more marketable, and how you too might incorporate them into your board game design practice for more resonant and impactful experiences. A little more about me as background, I'm a co-founder of Thorny Games. We're a game studio out of Berkeley, California. We specialize in tabletop role-playing and live action games. Our games often deal with the more intimate and human sides of language and cryptography. We've been lucky to have won a few awards, including tabletop game of the year categories at IGDN, Gen Con's Annie's, and Indicate Europe. All of that is just to say that, like many folks at GDC, games are an important part of my life and work, and I spend a healthy chunk of my energy on them, both in play and design which sometimes leads to the late night question, what do we keep from games? What do we keep from play? As game inclined folks, we spend large parts of our lives in play around the table or online. One end up being the keepsakes for all of this and how do we remember the experience? One answer is through how we document play through all the tools at our disposal to record and capture moments. We record video and stream live play. We take photos of our tabletop spreads. For example, this is a personal favorite, a gif of the mighty Lee Sedol playing AlphaGo as humanity's last hope in a human AI showdown. This captures the exact moment uh, where Lee Sedol places his uh, hand of God move, ultimately winning the game. Now, this is an epic snapshot of uh, an historical game that is worth capturing, sure, uh, and not quite the same stakes, but I've played out lots of games that are important in my life uh, uh, that I want to keep too. And by documenting play, we're acknowledging that play is meaningful and that playful experiences are things that deserve to be kept and revisited. And documentation can act as mementos to take us back to the table and help us hold on to game experiences like we would hold on to any other momentous thing. So with that, I'd like to introduce the idea of an artifact of play. In its broadest sense, an artifact of play is something created during a game that outlives the session itself. Simple. This is a wide definition that welcomes lots of the ways that we document play. Uh, beyond documentation, just lots of what we keep from play. Many things fall under this definition. There is a wide world of artifacts of play, examples like recordings with live streams, actual play, the throne of Twitch, play preparation. Think of all of those detailed GM notes and nifty maps for your D&D campaign. Note taking like character sheets, score pads, filled out crossword puzzles. Even move by move transcription, we have tables of recreated chess games and go matches that we can pour over centuries after those games have been played. And the list goes on to the many things that we keep from play. 
But within that wide world of artifacts of play, there is one particular category where I'd like to focus this talk, a subset of artifacts of play that deserves particular attention and where there is a lot of exciting design to tread. And we'll do that by adding one more piece to the definition. So from here on out, we'll focus on artifacts of play that are directed by the rules of the game. There is a growing class of games that are designed to create things as you play them. These are games that include an artifact by design. So to play the game is to make the artifact. This is different from our epic Go photo, live streams, DM notes, those are player driven and not inherent to the game itself. So under this narrower definition, this means that an artifact is reliably produced by a game session and also reflective of the choices in that game session unique to the particular time, space, and people who are part of making it. So from here on out, this is what we'll focus on when we say artifacts of play. We have some shared language now. Let's dig into what makes artifacts of play fun and effective and how they can be a powerful tool for tabletop game design. So to do this, follow me on a small tour of artifacts of play. We'll name a few standout artifacts and how they have been used to up the fun and deepen the emotional and narrative resonance of their design. I'll offer a quality and an artifact that exemplifies it and along the way, sing the praises of a few great games. Artifacts is playful documentation. Um, artifacts of play can be a form of documentation, uh, as we can see, and they can be how you remember the experience but unlike a photo, say, they are inherently more playful and true to the particular experience created at the table since they are born out of it. They are keepsakes and mementos that are directly produced from the game. So more than a photo, the character of a game is better captured by an artifact. A great example of this is the shared drawing pad in the Fantastic party game, A Fake Artist Goes to New York by Oink Games. Fake Artist is a hidden role game between real artists and one fake who is trying to stay under the radar. In this game, everyone draws a single picture together on a pad of paper based on a prompt. Every round there's an artist adding something to the picture bit by bit, a leg here, circle there, swiggle over here, but the fake artist goes in blind, not knowing what's being drawn at all, and it's their dirty job to bungle their way through without being detected. So the artifact in this game is the shared drawing pad that becomes the canvas for this weird and collaborative art that you make together. The artifact is thematic to the game itself, where you just see these snooty artists stroking their beards around the canvas, sussing each other out. Uh, but the drawing also contains so much relevant information about what happened here. You can see the fake artist's hedge. Uh, you can almost write out stroke by stroke where the fake artist blew it. Uh, it becomes a log for the silly hijinks among friends, all captured in just one drawing. So now every time that you open the box, you can flip to that pad and smile at the ridiculous art that you've created uh, and all the good times you've had with your friends. And that makes it pretty magical. Artifacts of play are immersive. They forge a link between the game world and the real world. Uh, because an artifact is something you create from within the context of a game, they can help blur the lines of what is play and what isn't. Uh, and because they last beyond the end of a session, interacting with them can bring you more deeply back into the world that was created at the table. A fantastic example of immersive artifacts comes from the role-playing game Thousand-Year-Old Vampire by Tim Hutchings. Thousand-Year-Old Vampire is a solo role-playing game where you wallow in the inner musings and the macabre life events of an ancient vampire. Uh, the rulebook is a beautiful and immersive product itself. It uses all the trappings of uh, old bound journals and the intricacies of print, but ultimately it's a model for the artifact that you make by playing the game which is the rules lead you to create your own sad and twisted vampire's journal. Chronicled over years in vampire time, you detail events, you gain attributes and stats, 
you encounter old loves and grudges, and you do this playing out the game through a journal of your own making. In the end, you have created this ghoulish testimony of an old vampire and have a lasting artifact of the experience. This journal lives in the physical space the players occupy as human beings, which gives it a more visceral and physical relationship with the game itself. You can touch it, you can fold it, doodle on it, interact with it. And having this physical journal artifact bridges the worlds and then puts you back in vampire mode each time you return to play. You can totally imagine a version of this game played with verbal prompts or without writing, but it would be a poor experience for it. The artifact itself makes the game more impactful. Friendly warning for anyone who is in the middle of their Risk Legacy campaign and avoiding spoilers, just skip to the next slide. So artifacts of play can help to personalize the game. They can make the game particular to a time and place and the people who are part of it. They become a vector for how to leave your mark on the game. Choices you make are funneled into the artifact, and that means in big or small ways, the end product will reflect you. You feel like you have given something of yourself to the game. Uh, every game is different, and there's a clarity that you, in particular, not just some generic set of stand-ins, actually played this game. Uh, so a great example of this uh, is from uh, tabletop board games in the finished map from a game of Risk Legacy. In particular, the artifact that is built from the win reward in Risk Legacy. So Risk Legacy is a campaign game, multiple sessions where rules are added, bent, and molded over the course of play. Um, there are many interesting and transgressive things that you're led to do over the course of a campaign. But one of the win conditions in particular transforms the board from a more generic map into an artifact of play. When you win a session of Risk, you get the reward of naming a portion of the map and writing it on the board. It lives there then as a record for your past success and lasts through subsequent games. And along with the other choices you make that permanently affect the board, the board then becomes an artifact of your campaign that is a capstone of this epic multi-session experience. A quick Google search for Risk Legacy boards will bring you many framed versions like you see here. So keeping it as a trophy of a personal world takeover is a uh, common inclination. Artifacts of play can affect who has control in a game. By empowering players to create something as they follow the rules, you are giving them choices, offering them more uh, authority as free agents to shape play. How you build artifacts of play can set the contract for how players should also interact with one another. A shining example of an artifact that channels control is the collaborative map from The Quiet Year. This is Avery Alder's game about telling the story of a community in a lone quiet year before the end times. So the quiet year is a story game, but with no central game master. So no single player that is in charge of world building or what happens. It's fundamentally collaborative. Every turn, the active player turns over a card, which asks them a question, uh, which they answer about what's happening to the community. And they take an action, and every answer is reflected on the map that the players collaboratively draw and create during play. The map that you build together ends up being a reflection of choices that you make and how they interact with the choices of your fellow players. As an artifact then, the map itself becomes a different canvas for play and a means to portion out control. On your turn, you make a choice and you change the map, but the map is this living record and forces you to acknowledge the choices from the past and then build on them. In this way, the map almost becomes a filter for collaborative control. This isn't to say every artifact of play forces collaboration, but rather it can be a lens to emphasize who has control at a given point in a game. Artifacts of play can be compelling marketing tools. If something is made out of fun or a part of a playful experience, it often just makes for an intriguing and attention grabbing object that people will want to know more about. Uh, it invites conversation. 
if an artifact is well designed, it's also something that people will choose to keep, display, and show off, and that can be marketing gold. Uh, an example artifact that does this nicely is from TKO. That's one of the Jackbox games. TKO is a digital party game which makes it choice for playing with friends and family remotely. Uh, Gameplay is about smashing together silly puns and awkward drawings made by the players, and then funneling that mess into t-shirt designs, which then go head to head in battle. It's a great time that just guarantees laughter. Uh, but there's a brilliant stroke at the end of the game where you have the option to take it with you by actually buying physical shirts from your own knockout t-shirt design. This shirt is a sweet marketing artifact of play. As a player, I feel compelled to wear it because it's something I made while having fun with my friends. It's an inside joke come to life, night and day from some generically branded game shirt. With this, you just get the fun by seeing the artifact. And while wearing it, it naturally invites the question for people who I encounter, what the heck does that mean? And that is a choice marketing moment if I know one. Artifacts of play can um, also make games feel more intimate. Co-creation is a bonding experience and funneling that energy into an artifact can create a deeper connection between players. Let's talk about the artifact of play in one of our games, Dialect, a game about language and how it dies. This is a tabletop role-playing game where you tell the story of an isolated community by building their language. In the game, you gradually build up elements of language among players as you tell the story of this community and what happened to them. That means that people gain fluency in their own dialect over the course of play. The artifact in dialect is the language you create as the game unfolds. It's intangible, unlike many of the other artifacts that we've highlighted, but it's sticky in the minds of players who make up words to mark these story beats. We found players really love using their dialect long after a session has ended. The artifact of language drives a really interesting connection among players. In the game, you use words you make together, which leads you to play with the artifact as it's being made. It offers this stealthy way of connecting the players to both the story and each other, all the while tying up their choices into their dialect. Co-creation is moving on its own, but it packs an extra punch when it's captured in a word. This plays on the same dynamics and intrigue of a secret handshake. You are creating your own language for an in-group, and that is a great way of accelerating a feeling of intimacy. Artifacts of play offer a lot for tabletop design. This is a small helping of example games and artifacts, but it should give a taste in how varied they can be across type and tone. Artifacts can amplify the underlying feeling of a game, be it silly or serious. They make games feel more personalized and intimate. From social party games, a big feelings RPG session, strategy campaign tabletop, all can benefit from well-designed artifact. So if your interest is piqued after this tiny tour and you're eager to start designing these into your next tabletop project, let me offer a few words of advice to clear the way. The first point, make it immersive. In my opinion, this is an artifact's most exciting property. It is the biggest reason you should care. Sometimes people will use the term the magic circle to talk about the space within which a game takes place, um, where meanings change and the rules and social conventions of the game uh, are accepted as true. Artifacts of play as we've defined them are made within the magic circle and will emphasize the meaning that you create there. This is really powerful. It means that you can keep a lasting taste of an experience that typically ends when a game stops. As a designer, you should ask yourself, what part of the game's fiction do you want to spotlight? Where do I want to bridge the game world and the real world? And let that guide how you design the artifact. Next, where's the fun in your game? Such a simple and important question. What makes your game interesting and worth playing? 
what is the main point? Uh, in any project, you should have a clear answer. Uh, and as a designer, to me, it is always surprising how that straightforward question can get muddled and pushed aside as you deal with the many other moving parts of tabletop design. In your game, you should clearly know where the fun is and what is scaffolding for the fun. Once you can name where the fun is in your game, that's a great place to consider how an artifact could be used to amplify it. If the fun is making silly puns with friends, put it there. If it's the sweet taste of victory in head-to-head -head combat across the world map, put it there. If it's big feelings RPG session where you grapple with your own monstrosity, put it there. So if you're looking for where an artifact to play may fit into your design, tie it to where the fun is. A good artifact will amplify what it points to and it will be a keepsake of the game as a whole. So make sure you do that for the fun of your game and not for the scaffolding. Artifacts last beyond the session of a game. They are for keeps. When designing an artifact into your game, ask yourself, what is something a player would want to keep? For one, there's an aesthetic consideration. An artifact for keep should be something interesting to look at, something playful or evocative of the experience, something that people will want to show off. Depending on how heavily gameplay features the artifact, this may also influence how important the related craftedness of it is. Also consider the practicalities of keeping it. Is the artifact something people can store, something they would display? Is it something tangible at all? On the flip side, as designers, we should ask ourselves what we want players to keep about the game. Things that last have a way of dominating the memory of an experience. So a photo really might be all you remember about that birthday party or vacation. If an artifact is for keeps, as designers, we should make sure it's built in such a way that it can stand in place for the game. Designing with artifacts of play is an act of giving up control. Uh, in big or small ways, you are ceding control to your players to leave their mark on the game. In some ways, uh, it's empowering players to be co-authors. Uh, that means you won't have full control on the ins and outs of the system that you design. An artifact forces you to make space in your design so that players can make something that's unique to their session. This creates almost a built-in conversation between designer and player. When you design to include an artifact to play, it can become a catalyst to relinquish authority as a designer and give more to the players. So ask yourself, where can you give up control to your players? Let that guide your choices. So if you design tabletop games and are looking to push the emotional resonance of their experience further to make your games more intimate and memorable, consider artifacts of play as part of your design toolkit. At Thorny Games, we have grown as a studio by grappling with some of these questions and finding a place for artifacts of play in our work. We feel like there is so much rich design space to tread in making games that make things. Thanks a bunch.